Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the conference committee on House File 5242. Uh, we have a couple of uh, items that we are going to adopt or discuss and adopt. And, um, uh, but before we do that, I'd like to, so I'd like to call on um, Chair Nelson to uh, make a motion and then we'll hear from Representative Neuer who will give us a little background on the, on the item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll move the A358 amendment. Yes. I'll move the A24-0358 amendment. <clears throat> okay. The amendment is moved. And um, Representative Newark can explain a little bit about the amendment. And I also just wanted to add that we are gathered here on Sunday, May 19th, page out of Senator Dibbles. Uh, at 1.50 p.m. And the quorum is present, and uh, Senator Port is joining us online. So with that, uh, Chair Noor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. This is the TNC drivers, uh, or otherwise known as Uber Lyft bill. Uh, this is about the fairness for the drivers. Uh, so this bill basically uh, addresses the compensation for the drivers on the global agreement that was reached yesterday, whereby the driver's uh, minimum compensation will be a dollar 28 cents and also 31 cents per minute. Also within this bill, we are providing personal injury uh, compensation or, or insurance for the drivers. Mr. Chair and members, uh, this bill also addresses the deactivation issues for TNC drivers. It also addresses the notice and pay transparency. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, uh, they, there is an enforcement mechanism in this bill to make sure that uh, the drivers uh, have got a way to address their concerns with the TNC. And that's the nutshell of the bill. And I'll be glad to answer any questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Chairman uh, Noor. Does anyone have any questions? on the amendment. Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think we have a couple amendments to this amendment. Is that correct? Uh, we have one amendment uh, that I'm aware of. OK, and, and then there should be another oh. one uh, in the fact that in the House, uh, there has already been an amendment to this that has been accepted. So that would have to be included as well. Yes. So I just want to keep that in, in mind for that. And then the other question is, uh, do we have anybody from, and I know this is a little bit unusual for conference committee, but do we have anybody from uh, the various parties that are willing to testify that this is actually the agreement that everybody agrees to? Yeah, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that, Representative Petersburg. And if, is there anyone from the public here that wishes to testify, but you would have to keep it very brief? see you down there, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, Mr. Carlson, welcome to the committee. Did you want to uh, Bri briefly testify? Briefly, Mr. Chairman, and I think uh, uh, asked to uh, make sure we put on the record. Uh, number one, Joel Carlson, I'm here on behalf of Uber Technologies. Uh, appreciate the amendment and agreement that is uh, in front of you. It's a, um, an agreement that Uber will continue to operate in the state of Minnesota under. We appreciate all the hard work that's gone into it. I think there is a, uh, a, a a 148 amendment that adjusts uh, part of the effective dates that we support that amendment uh, when that is offered. Um, but the uh, amendments that are being discussed, uh, Representative Petersburg on the House floor, are not part of the agreement that we had any intention of putting into this package. So I know I'm watching what's going on uh, 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 up there as well, but um, I, I, those are nothing that are part of this agreement. So. I just want to make sure on the record that this is the agreement and we haven't agreed to any other provisions um, uh, to be added to it. Okay. Um, thank you. Are there any questions of uh, Mr. Carlson? 
Representative Petersburg. Uh, just, just to be uh, clear, um, all the provisions that are in this underlying amendment uh, is agreed to, and and we have, uh, shall we say, peace in the valley. Um, right. Thank you. Okay. Um, welcome. Uh, please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. John Wright, Cozen, Lucano Public Strategies. We represent Lyft. And I echo Mr. Carlson's comments. Um, we have reached agreement on this bill with the authors, and we appreciate all the hard work that's gone into it. And we, uh, under this bill, Lyft will continue to operate in Minnesota. Thanks again for all of the work, and uh, including stakeholders in the discussion. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that uh, your testimony is inclusive of the uh, the A148 and A150 amendment. Have you seen those amendments? And uh, do you have a position? Chairman, I, I've only looked at the A148. Mr. Chair? Yeah. yeah. The A150 amendment is to a different part. Oh, that's a, de that's, a different that's to one, a different right. part. Sorry. It's not to, it's Thank not you. to the Thank you. Got it. I remember. I remember now. Thank you. An hour and a half asleep. Uh, yes, please proceed with your testimony. Yeah, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Yes, I was remiss to mention that we that Lyft does support the A148 amendment. Okay. And Mr. Carlson, is you, you as well. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, yes. And okay. Is, uh, a part of the so, agreement. and with that, uh, are there any additional questions? Committee members. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to testify? Okay. Representative Petersburg, is that, um, did you have any further questions of uh, no, either testifier? No, uh, when we get to uh, the amendments to the amendments. We... Okay, good. Okay, well, thank you to both of you. We appreciate your involvement and uh, as well, and Chair Neuer, you can, if there's any other questions of Chair Neuer. Okay, uh, Chairman Nelson. Um, the evil. The A one fifty one. I can't even talk. <laughs> too, too little sleep. The A one forty eight amendment now. Yeah. I'll move the H fifty two forty two A one forty eight amendment to the to the to the amendment. Yes, I, that'd be the way. And um, just very briefly. Uh, and I'm looking at just the effective date, correct? And yeah, it's just a changing a changing an effective date in the bill. Um, is there discussion? <clears throat> Representative Petersburg. And it, what does this impact have? It looks like it's, it's moving at just a month earlier. Is that correct? Jane Nelson. Um, from reading the amendment, yes, that's what it does. Thank you. Okay. Discussion to the A148. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion prevails. Okay. Um, yeah, the amendment as amended is uh, also Chair Nelson. And I'll move. Mr. Chair. Oh, oh, yeah. you have an amendment. I'm sorry. There, there are a couple other amendments. One is yeah. to make sure that we get on record that we have, I believe in order for it to stay germane and so forth else, we would have to add on to that the accepted language of the uh, A29 amendment that was accepted onto the floor. Is that not correct? Uh, apparently not. Um, Senator McEwen. I think it's just on. I think. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for the discussion uh, about this amendment. I understand there were some additional things that had happened in the House, but I just wanted to offer, Mr. Chair, that I do not believe this goes to germaneness at all, and I would oppose the addition of this amendment. Thank you. Well, <laughs> uh, Representative Petersburg. Uh, Mr. Chair, so the essence of this, the reason why this bill is here is, is because uh, in, in order for it to be valid for a conference committee has to be heard in, in a body. And the bill, as if this is amendment, is the bill, it's not what was heard in the body because the amendment that was added on on the floor will be the actual amendment of the, will, will be the actual bill that comes before us. So in essence, if you wanted to, um, we would have to deny 
accepting it or we'd have to remove it as an amendment as well, I believe. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but my understanding is that in order for us to put this amendment, this bill as an amendment onto it, we would have to uh, put it in as we would have received it once it passes off of the House floor. Now, maybe other people, uh, fiscal staff or somebody else can give us clarity on it, but that was my understanding. Does anybody verify that? Well, um, Representative Petersburg, that was the, the, the agreement that we had just uh, heard from Mr. Carlson. Uh, he's here again and I think can yeah. discuss. And, and then we'll have from Chair, we'll hear from Chair Double and Senator McEwen as well. So, uh, Chair Double. So, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I. I would be very surprised if that's the case. That means that um, if we were in conference committee and debating the provisions from the Senate and the House as we're compiling conference committee report, we could make no changes um, to what was brought off either floor. This is the same circumstance. Yeah. So, and as we know, um, in conference committee, we both take in subjects um, that are germane, um, that are related, you know, that, that may or may not in, in literal sense, uh, have, have come off the floor, uh, or either floor, and we also take proposals that come into conference committee from the House, from the Senate, or even from both sides, and make changes to those in the conference committee process. So no, I don't think we need verbatim the language of whatever's been added on the floor of the House to be brought back in a conference committee. Representative Petersburg. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I think you missed a step there because when we accept it in the conference committee, we accept it in as the the way the bill came in. Then in conference committee, we can take things out. Uh, and so right now you're accepting a bill that isn't completed yet on the House floor, and you're accepting it as if it had been completed, even though there's going to be something new in it. So in essence, the way to handle that would be to have accepted it there and then taken it back out in conference committee. And, and certainly, as, as chairs in the majority, we can we can vote it however you wish. I'm just saying that in process, um, the th typical response is that we, if the bill is part of the conference committee, then it has to be taken out. And right now, we don't have that option uh, for that piece if we don't uh, figure out some way of, of dealing with that. That's my only concern, and certainly, I can't overrule the majority, uh, but that's there. And I do have one more amendment after that. Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess in my time in the legislature, it's my understanding that conference committee reports are blank, that until we vote something into it, Correct. it's not part of the conference committee. So we can just change the language, agree to, as we've done in this conference committee already, take portions of House, take portions of the Senate, so that it's not something that was acted on in either body, and maybe even tweak it a little bit with language to make sure it works. And that, But until it's voted in, it's not in the conference committee report. Again, the, the conference committee report is a blank document until the things are voted into it. And so right now, this is not in. Until we vote it in, it's not in the conference committee report. Thank you. That's a good reminder and primer on conference committees, Representative Petersburg. And thank you. So uh, is that making the assumption that the mm. House will not be voting it into the conference committee? Because that is where it would come to the committee is from off the House floor, um, it, in my opinion. And so, um, and because it hasn't been heard on the House floor yet, it isn't technically something that we can accept. And I thought that at least something, it has to be heard in one body or one committee or something before it can be accepted into a conference report. So um, those are just parameters. I mean, Mr. Chair, you have that responsibility. I will uh, release it to that. I, I've given you my objections uh, to this. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, did you have an amendment that you wanted to? Uh... Yeah, the, the other amendment, Mr. Chair, is that we have been over, over a while been starting to switch from shells to musts, and I, there are three or four areas in which it has the word shell, and my motion would be to ask the reviser to change all shells to musts in the bill. I think I found at least three. That's 
one second, uh, Rep. Uh, Lead Petersburg. Sure. Okay. Um, with that uh, amendment, I think we would just want to add that uh, you would want the staff to perhaps make technical changes yep. if necessary. That, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Um, we wanted to consult with them, Lead Petersburg, and, and just make sure that uh, that was the, the case. You don't have to have lines. You don't have to have a specific line or page number. Yes, yeah, just, just to direct correct. the staff to change correct. that. Correct, correct. Okay, discussion. Is everyone clear? Maybe, uh, uh, Mr. Bruce, you could just uh, repeat the, the <coughs> amendment that we're voting on. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, I have for an oral amendment to the 824-0358 amendment, uh, where found change shall to must, so delete shall and insert must. Uh, however, um, I, I would note that there could be some technical issues with that, so there, there might be uh, locations where that would not work as a direct substitution. So in conjunction with the, the staff direction to make technical changes, um, there might be locations where uh, shall is best left as is. Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll add to the end of that where appropriate. Okay. All right, uh, Lee Petersburg asks, uh, has a phrase at the end where appropriate. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for this discussion. Um, I think that uh, what I'm hearing um, from my sidebar conversations with nonpartisan staff is that there could be some change of meaning that would accompany the proposed changes from us to shall. And um, we want to make sure that we're keeping with the agreement between uh, that was negotiated between the parties that brings this this content before us. So my my suggestion to all of us would be that we go ahead and, um, of course, as, as we will uh, allow and, and ask that our nonpartisan staff apply their expertise and uh, use their judgment to comply with the intent of, of what this is and make any technical changes they would have to make. But I, I don't uh, support this, this specific imposed change. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, Mr. Carlson, it sounds like you would like to weigh well, in. Very, very briefly, and I appreciate uh, Representative Petersburg's um, um, suggestion. However, I can tell you that every word of this bill has been vetted with counsel, and where shall is in this bill, it is the appropriate grammar. Uh, and so uh, we think that's uh, right, and, um, and we appreciate the like subject matter in this bill on page 126 uh, related to your dynamic. Um, um, uh, pricing study that is in here that deals with the um, uh, wave wheelchair accessible vehicles on page 126. We're, we're putting additional funding into wave vehicles in this bill as well um, uh, on page 10 uh, in increasing the rate for wave vehicles. And um, so we appreciate both of the provisions that would be in this bill. Chairman Dibble. Uh, thank you. I also appreciate the spirit and intent and the positive nature of the motion that uh, Lee Petersburg has made. I don't support the motion for the reasons that Mr. Carlson decided and also noting the hour. Um, it will just simply slow this process down. We don't have a lot more time. Um, so uh, I would be opposed to this motion. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair Dibble, and you mentioned one additional comment you'd like to make. Okay. All right, is there any further discussion before we vote? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the Petersburg motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 The motion does not prevail. <coughs> Chairman Dibble. Do you want to move the, do you want to say? Oh, I just, I just wanted to get back quickly to the discussion about germaneness. Um, um, I believe this uh, package is, uh, this proposal is germane. Um, uh, because the underlying conference committee package already has a substantial reference to TNCs uh, in the study, of course, uh, that was initiated and championed by 
uh, Senator Westland, also it is a transportation matter uh, combined with, you know, uh, conditions in terms of employment, uh, uh, which is uh, substantially related to committees. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not employment. Oh, okay. It's not employment. Related to uh, labor, labor issues, so, which is dealt with in the bill. Contract. Okay. Good. Thank you, Chair Dibble. Um, we have an additional amendment uh, from Chairman Nelson. Um, I have the. Mr. Chair, I think you need to dispose of this. Amendment. I think we oh, need to, yeah. Sorry. Right. Yep, yep. So, move the, uh, so we're at the. Move the so, Mr. Chair, I'll renew my motion that, a, that the A24 0358 as amended be recommended to pass by the conference committee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion aye. prevails now. We can get to the second amendment from Chair Nelson. And Mr. Chair, we have the, the H5242A150 amendment, and I'd like to make a. Um, my brain is just is freezing up here. But there's a there's a there's a, a miss. We need to add the word or on line 1.4 of the amendment before more. It should be, instead of reading, if we don't include that, it'll read two more board parking units. It should read two or more. And uh, I want to incorporate, that's the word I'm looking for, that into my amendment, the A150 amendment. And um, check with staff here to make sure that's right. I'm saying it right. Um, my brain is like getting a little fried. Yeah, Mr. Rest, I, I think we're all on that. Uh... Uh, Mr. Brand Chair, new. Representative Nelson, yes, it would be to uh, incorporate. And that you, you could then be making the motion of moving the A-150 with the incorporated change. And so, Mr. Chair, I'll move the A-150 am amendment as in with the incorporation of the or before the more on line 1.4. And can you just uh, very briefly uh, explain to the committee what this amendment does? And uh, this, what this does is it just tweaks the language here. I guess it was proposed by staff, but in the, this division starting in 162.21 will, will read, at any time upon the request of an exclusive bargaining, rec bargaining unit, and then go down, the commissioner must designate as a single unit two or more bargaining unit represented by exclusive representative. So, how that, so that's what it does. It's just basically tweaking the language a little bit. Of our existing... Uh, of our existing okay. uh, conference committee report okay. language. Discussion? Okay. Um, then uh, all those in favor of the uh, A-150 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion prevails. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I'm getting... Ms. James? Yeah. Ms. James. You, you need to adopt the amendment as amended by the oral amendment. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, can you restate the motion, uh, Chair Nelson? So, I'll move that the motion that the BIFTA H-150 be adopted as amended but the, by the language incorporated. I guess I just I'm looking here. My um, Mr. Chair, Representative Nelson, I'm sorry I missed I missed that last piece. We'll adopt, uh, move to adopt the A150 as I guess I'm I'm lost here. My as oral the amendment. amendment by the oral amendment. Yes, correct. Okay. So, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion prevails. So now. I think we need to have Senate Council do a walkthrough of the amended spreadsheet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, for the record, Eric Olson, Senate Fiscal Analyst for the Labor Committee. Uh, you should have had passed out a spreadsheet that just says 2024 Labor Supplemental Budget Conference Committee Agreement, top left corner. Bottom left corner, 519, 2024, 819 AM. There is one, one change overall compared to the spreadsheet that I walked through before in conference committee. That is line 13 on page one. 
This is just in, for enforcement, education, and outreach related to TNCs. So this is section 12 of the A24 amendment as amended. So it's $173,000 from the general fund in FY25, and then $123,000 ongoing beginning in fiscal year 26 for a total biennial, tails biennial amount of $246,000 from the general fund. So if you go to page three of the spreadsheet for the net general fund impact, uh, looking in the conference columns for 24-25, the net general fund spend from in the labor sections is now 10.823 million in FY24-25 and 696,000 from the general fund in 26-27 and leadership has signed off on these net changes to the general fund for the labor jurisdiction. With that, that concludes my walkthrough. Thank you, uh, Chair Devil. And I'll just note for the record that a letter to that effect uh, was uh, issued and distributed sometime in the recent past. <laughs> I can't remember when it came out. My desk at the camp. Okay. Are there any other questions of uh, so Representative Petersburg? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I know this is a direct appropriation, so this is the money that gets. But do we have any indication? Uh, do we have any kind of fiscal note of say uh, of what is if this is, is sufficient to do what is necessary? Um, I mean, how did we come up with these dollars that are needed for the educational piece and enforcement? Piece? Thank you, uh, Lee Petersburg, and uh, Mr. Olafson can respond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative Petersburg. There is a complete fiscal note. This completely matches what. Uh, the Department of Labor and Industry requested uh, said would be the potential fiscal impact for uh, to receive and resolve notice and other documented related complaints from TNC drivers uh, to receive and resolve compensation related uh, complaints from TNC drivers and just for general outreach and education. So the reason why it's 173,173 173 in the first year is for $50,000 of outreach and education. That's one time. And then it's 123,000 ongoing for an one FTE labor investigator position. And thank you. Lee Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and is that available on that spreadsheet available online? And is that um, in reference to the previous bill or is this uh, actually impacted by the new bill? Uh, this, well, Chris, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, the, the enforcement sections match uh, the language from the third engrossment of Senate file 4780. So it would it would match what what is in this agreement before you. Okay, thank you. M Mr. Chair. Lee Peters uh, My second question was, is, is it available, this um, oh. fiscal note available online? Because I, I don't have it in front of me, so it must not have been handed out today. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, yes, there is a published fiscal note uh, online to the Senate file. Sure. Lee Peters, where did you have a follow-up? No, I was just, just checking on the finances. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, any further questions or comments before we adopt the amended version? I think we'll have uh, Senator McEwen, uh, Chair, Chair McEwen. Um, any further comments, discussion before we adopt? Lee Petersburg. Sorry, I, I was just going to say uh, we're having a, a debate on this floor, and so some of the concerns that are there, uh, uh, you can kind of review that. I'm not going to go over them, but there is a, one piece that's a little bit concerning, and that has to do with, with um, um, some of the agencies that are involved with this, nonprofits, that have, have some tainted history that may be of concern. And you can listen to all the debate on the floor. I'm not going to go over that, but that's a concern to me. But it's, it is good for us to agree that we can preempt um, the Minneapolis-St. Paul and, and make decisions that are actually best for, for the public. Uh, and, um, and that's unfortunately we had to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Lee Petersburg. Uh, any other comments or discussion? Okay, uh, Chair McEwen, do you want to make our final motion to adopt here? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would be honored to do that. Uh, I'm very pleased, and um, I just want to say thank you um, also. I didn't get a chance 
thank you everybody uh, for the work that went into uh, to coming together today and to make um, this agreement part of our committee report. It's a, a, a fantastic adoption, so thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, I move to adopt House File 5242 as amended as the Transportation, Housing, Labor Conference Committee report with staff directed to make technical corrections as necessary. Okay, that's the motion before us. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. The motion prevails. So that, uh, Chair Dibble, did you want to make any closing comments? Uh, just uh, that uh, uh, I love that we're back together again. <laughs> uh, we're, we're calling this the uh, Frank Hornstein Minnesota goodbye. <laughs> and uh, once again, as we, uh, as we noted uh, uh, the other night, um, uh, your career in this legislature has been uh, one of the greatest of all time. You will go down as one of the greatest legislators. And it has been the honor of a lifetime to serve with you, as I know uh, that sentiment is shared by many, many, everyone in this room. So I appreciate that so much. Um, uh, and I want to also offer my thanks to you and to everybody on this committee who, with whom I've developed some wonderful relationships over the years. But the main thank you goes to all of the people that worked very, very hard on getting us to this place where uh, we have agreement. And um, the bottom line here is that uh, uh, we have um, uh, people who are here who are our, our drivers. I rely on Lyft and Uber as the transportation chair that doesn't drive. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pleased that, that we were able to make this agreement. And I'm also pleased that the, the companies were uh, at the table and testified as well. Uh, the, I also want to thank the governor and the governor's office and then all of the the legislators, uh, uh, particularly, um, you know, Senator Fateh and uh, Representative Hassan and Representative Noor, uh, who put in, um, uh, Representative Hussein is here as well, uh, put in just so many hours, <laughs> hours and hours and hours of, of work. And I, I really think that they're the ones that deserve the gratitude and our thanks. Uh, and as well as to the to the drivers that are here today. So, uh, with that, uh, I believe the conference committee for House File Fifty Two Forty Two is adjourned. But you know.